the author of The Physics of a Flying Saucer. Please welcome Ted Roach. Oh, welcome, Ted. How are you? Welcome. Well, that was real beam me up, Teddy it stuff. Was, yes. Now we were talking about the physics of flying saucers, getting flying saucers around. Now, what is your theory on how a flying saucer getting from galaxies away to Earth? How would the physics work? Well, we've got to understand that uh, we come from a very primitive uh, level in physics, and I've analysed the the field that we we're in, the gravitational field, as a time field caused by large number of little particles called gravitons, billions of gravitons radiating out from matter like light does. And when you analyse it as a time field, you, you then come to conclusions which are at a higher level than you do with Newtonian physics. So getting here from light years away isn't done by physical movement, it's done by time? That's right. You develop around the craft a time field very similar to the way light does when it comes from distant galaxies and you can travel, you could go to the French Riviera for afternoon tea. Um, now if you we're understand, getting close. We're if, getting very close if here. You, if you understand the physics, you can then develop the craft. How do you know? Well, I've looked at the, the, the motion of the planets and analysed the planets using this uh, physics. Uh, and uh, it all fits in. It fits in with uh, electric fields and magnetic fields, all as dimensional time fields. And, uh, and there are a very large number of people who have now been calling me, doctors of science, who have called me saying that they are very, very interested in the physics. You believe in flying saucers? I do. When you look at the large number of galaxies there are in the universe, the, the, the Hubble Space Telescope analysed mm -hmm. just a five cent area of the heavens and they found 25 galaxies each with around 100 to 200 billion stars in each one and that's throughout the whole of the cosmos then the, the chances of there being life elsewhere is astronomically high. You've, um, you've filed quite a few patents. Let's have mm -hmm. a look at some of the inventions. The, the Jets, uh, Jetsons uh, light aircraft. Yes. How, well, that, how does that work? Well, that's, that's like a flying saucer. And that, what that does, it's very similar to the lens of a camera, which um, the, these, this graviton field, it refocuses the graviton field in the direction of where the craft wants to go. And the occupants of the craft, in fact, have no G-forces on them. And that's why these flying saucers can change direction um, at, with 100 Gs compared with our, our uh, jet fighter pilots mm -hmm. who can only withstand about eight or nine. What about the machine that identifies abnormal magnetic fields in the body? Okay, well I gave a, a lecture to the uh, Physics Society at Sydney University a number of years ago and the professor of uh, medicine there said that I gave them a number of ideas because when you look at magnetic fields as time fields, you can then understand that, um, that cells uh, when they reproduce and break up, if, they, if they're in an uh, abnormal time field when they, they form, they then form cancers. And so we can, we, we, mm. we can look at cancers from that, uh, from that perspective as of time fields. What happened to your theories, your paperwork, on flying saucers? Well, when I put my patents in, I put uh, one provisional patent with ten inventions into the, uh, uh, into the patent office. They were taken by the Australian Defence Department and the Australian Safeguards Office and mm -hmm. I have that in my book, the, the letter that I got back from them and uh, my, one of my daughters uh, found uh, this high-tech bug I think I had it here somewhere. It's, oh, here there it is. is there. That, that's a five cent piece. Let me, there's, there's let the me little... just pick this up. So just... you're saying you gave all this information for patents and the Defence Force yeah. Confiscated it. Well, that is a that is and a, bugged your house. That's a security bug uh, uh, that the CIA, the American Jews, and the Australian Security Forces. So, use. do you think the Australian Army or intelligence is actually space travelling as we speak? No, but they are wanting to know. This is Star Wars physics. It's all Star Wars physics, mm -hmm. and the Americans are spending trillions of dollars on Star Wars physics. The stealth mm -hmm. bomber is part of it, and they're monitoring what everybody's doing. And I'm just, I probably just happen to be one of those people. Hmm. So, under you believe there have aliens visited us? Well, I, in my book, I explain uh, Noah's Ark and, and and what Ezekiel saw and a number of other things, and that it would appear from the technology that. Uh, 
there that uh, we've been visited for a very, very long time. Mm. And when you take into account that uh, some of the galaxies are over a billion years mm. older than Earth, there's a high probability that we've mm. been looked at just the same as we look at animals in national parks and things mm. like that. And, and when do you think I'd be able to get to Paris for afternoon tea? Well, it all depends. <laughs> if, we can, if we can get the finance, there's trillions of dollars worth of um, inventions that we can develop. And the motor car and highways and traffic jams and pollution will all become mm. redundant. So we've got to get into this Star Wars technology on a commercial basis and, and let the military look after their thing. But mm. we need to start doing it so that we can have our afternoon tea on the French Riviera. Sounding good to me. And if you'd like to know how you can do this and perhaps expand on your knowledge, it's called The Physics of, uh, of a Flying Saucer. Fascinating to, uh, to listen to your words. Thank you very much for joining us. Ted Thanks. Roach, ladies and gentlemen.